Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. We're going to be showing and talking about vortex generators in this video. Here's a slow approach in my session of 70. Still approaching at 40 miles an hour, I have a lot of aileron authority. Although I'm going really, really slow, I do not run out of elevator. Micro vortex generators are small aluminum blades placed in a spun wise line aft of the leading edge of the wing and tail surfaces. This approach is at about 50 miles an hour and the controls in our airplane feels very crisp, great control. Not only the ailerons get more authority at slow speeds, also the elevator has more authority and you can land slower and you don't feel like the airplane is falling from under you and I used to feel that before I had a vortex generator or run out of elevator and you also get more rudder authority the Cessna 170 they are placed on the leading edge of the wing and under the horizontal stack with Cessna 40 degrees of flaps and slow the airplane and then the vortex generators will start doing their work. On this approach I'm doing a 90 degree turn at about 50 miles an hour to do a final at 40 miles an hour. Again at these very slow speeds plenty of control authority. When I bought this Cessna 170, it did not have vortex generators, and I flew it for about two months. It already came with the Sportsman stall kit, so you could approach real slow. When the vortex generators were installed, I could tell a difference in the elevator. Coming this slow, it gave it more authority. Also, aileron control was a lot more crisp at slow speeds. Vortex generators are not only for backcountry flying. These are some of the benefits on some twins. Reduced VMCA, certified performance numbers, zero fuel weight increase, gross weight increase, improved aileron and rudder, a smooth ride in turbulence, more stable instrument platform. I interview Annie Brogan from Micro Area. Hi, how are you, Annie? Good, good morning. We're here in the Pacific Northwest Convention with Annie Brogan from Micro Aerodynamics and we're going to talk a little bit about this and the magic it does. So what does it do on an airplane? The vortex generators are creating a little tornado, a little vortex, and that results in more control response at slow speeds and a lower stall speed. So the angle is what accelerates the air. That is correct. Airflow hits the side of the blade hops over and that's what creates the vortex and this airflow is going faster exactly. than the flow over the ground. Exactly. Yeah, I, I have them on my Cessna 182, my 170B and they're amazing. So when was the company started? In November of 1989. Which airplane? Cessna 340. That's a big twin for that, yeah. So it was tested and flown and then the FAA has to approve it and then it's 
Yeah, it is, it's a long process, but it starts with us being able to prove what it is that um, the benefit that we're creating with the Vortex Generators and then the rest of it is the FAA confirming that benefit by flying uh, the airplane and uh, and drawings and installation manuals and other yeah. paperwork that needs to happen in order to create the STC. So every single kit has been tested on an airplane? Yes. So for the pilot you will not be a test pilot. It's been tested and it's proved that it works. That it's is safe. correct. Yes. That is correct. Yes. And which one is the most popular? It's maybe a tie between this the Super Cub and the 182. Okay. I think there have been more Super Cubs uh, okay. equipped with the Vortex generators, but the 182 is also very popular, maybe number two. Very interesting. Okay, well, Annie, hope you have a good uh, show, and it was great seeing you. Thank you. Good to see you, too. Okay. My Cessna 182 is a P model, 1973. It came with a Horton stall and no vortex generators. I was not too happy with the performance. I flew it like that like for a year. When I was doing slow approaches, I had a feeling of the airplane falling from under me and I would run out of elevator. I was doing these approaches at about 60 miles an hour. The aileron control was not as crisp. Then I added the vortex generators and during my slow approaches I could tell the elevator authority has been increased. I was not running out of elevator when coming slow. Also aileron and rudder control had more authority. Sometimes I have heard pilots commenting that you will lose cruise speed with 40 generators. I have flown these two airplanes before and after installation and did not notice any reduction in cruise speed. However, I did notice the benefits I got from them. If you don't fly slow, you will never see a difference though. Here is a graphical example of what vortex generators do in the wing. Any airplane I will own, I will put vortex generator. The CJ6 Nanchan I own came with vortex generators when I bought it. On many of the airliners, you can see vortex generators on the wings. Also, you can see them on some fighters, like this Harrier. So, as you can see, it's not only for backcountry flying or extreme flying. Here you can hear the sound of the VGs at very slow speeds. Here is the CJ6 Nanchang military trainer. It came with vortex generators. When I bought it, and according to the FAA flight test, it increased roll rate and also prevented spins. So to enter a spin is very, very difficult in my airplane. We have done it, but it is very hard to enter a spin. So how do micro vortex generators work? As air normally flows over the wing of an aircraft in flight, the air sticks to the surface of the wing. This adherence to the wing surfaces produces lift. If the airflow loses its adherence and separates from the wing, aircraft performance can suffer in the form of increased drag loss of lift and higher fuel consumption. Researchers at NASA Langley Research Center developed micro VGs to control this flow detachment by producing miniature controlled tornadoes called vortices. The micro VGs sweep away and control airflow separation over the airplane wing and flaps with benefit of reduced drag and increased lift. An example, less engine power needed to produce the same lift. In the case of the CJ6 Nanchan, the controls are very responsive, very crisp, and it's a joy to fly. Also, it can run short, 
and the stall is very forgiving. On the Cessna 170, the vortex generators are located on the leading edge of the wing and on the horizontal stack. It does not have VGs on the rudder. In the Cessna 182, the wing, horizontal stack, and also the rudder. You can see this slow approach into a small gravel bar in the Skycomics River in Washington. Even at about 40 miles an hour, I still have full control authority of the ailerons and the elevator. 